what's up guys? So in this video we're going to be making a Jenga block, just one of those tiny little ickle... No, I'm joking. Um, we're going to be making a giant Jenga block. I'm going to put the description up here somewhere, but it's basically for Maker's Jenga that we're doing for Maker Central this year. It's got to be uh, 12 inches by 2 inches by 4 inches altogether. Um, and what is the plan is everyone's going to bring a block or more if they want to and we're going to bring them to Maker Central and just play some giant Jenga. It means lots of people could bring different designs and different ways of doing it, different material. There's basically free reign of everything so it's going to be really interesting to see what people actually come up with. So again this is by uh, John Made It uh, on Instagram and he is championing all of this so it's going to be really good to see what everyone comes out with. So uh, watch my video, see how, what you think, and see if you like my design. So, I started with some 18mm birch ply, some oak, and some Oroco, and some Praduke. Gotta have some Praduke in there somewhere. So I cut these down to roughly the size that I needed to, to work with. Um, and this is where my first mistake is. I, I should have given myself some more access to play with, but... I didn't. It's going to be a common theme in this video, again, me making mistakes, but just stick with me and I'll work my way through it. So I started to resaw these down to size. I, I was limited by the width of the block that I was going to do, especially with the angles I was trying to play with. So I had to go a little bit thinner on some of the wood than I wanted to. There isn't a specific dimension that I'm looking for with this lumber. I'm just looking at getting it to a rough size that I know I can work with. I had an idea of the thickness that I wanted, but it was just trying to get them nice and square and nice and even so I could play with them later on. You can see here the rough pattern I'm going for. I'm just trying a few things to see how it looks, but I'm happy with how it all uh, went together. So, glue up went really well. Once I had that pattern that I liked, it was just getting them all together. This absolutely killed my arms because it, I didn't have a glue bot or anything to make it easier for me, so squeezing it out of the bottle was really hard. I went for Type 1 Original on this one because it's going to be an indoor project. It doesn't need to be waterproof or anything. Now, I'm not sure what the customary rule for this is, but... I just chucked as many clamps as I could physically put onto this. I did not want to have to go through this process again of getting the lumber back to right size. I wanted it to glue right first time. And am I glad that that came out okay. There were a few little voids in it, but it was nothing that I couldn't cut off because I had that little bit of extra length to play with. And oh, I was so happy that it came out well. And you can see by this cut that it is so nicely joined really well. But again, mistake number two, it's not long enough. But it does look oh so pretty though. Oh look, mistake number three. So that nice little template that you see there, yeah, that is the exact size that the block needs to be. No margin for error, perfect cuts every time. No cleaning, no sanding, that's the size it needs to be. Stupid pull for cutting it that size. Why didn't I cut it bigger? Give me some wiggle room. But no, I didn't. Oh, and please don't do what I do here. I take far too big of a cut in one go. I should have done smaller cuts and kept lifting the blade as I go along in order to get it right. But no, I was impatient and I tried to do it quickly and this could have gone horribly wrong. So please don't do what I do. Take small cuts and raise the blade. Okay? And also, because I had that template cut the perfect size, I did try to do the cuts to that size as well. I should have taken excess, taken it down on the planer or the thicknesser or something like that, but I was a, being a bit of a silly billy and I tried to do it perfectly first cut. I wasn't thinking that way, but that's just the way it turned out. Yeah, and you see me struggling there as well because my insert plate wasn't flush to the top of my table saw. So what I think I'll be doing soon is upgrading it with a zero insert plate clearance plate. And I'll probably follow Rag and Bone version. So I'll link it in the description and in the tag at the top now. Um, so if you haven't seen his upgrade for the table saw that I've got, definitely worth a check out. Uh, 
Oh, and then everyone's favourite is time sanding. So I started with my standard routine of 80 grit, 120 grit, and then 180 grit to finish. I then just did a little bit of hand sanding, and this is when I took off the really sharp edges and corners of it, because it was actually surprisingly sharp. It was at this point that the disappointment hit me, and I knew that it wasn't the right size. And I'm gutted. Absolutely gutted. Obviously, got to put the brand on. It doesn't finish the project till the brand's on. I shouldn't have gone too deep with this one. I held it there too long and pushed down too hard. And it, it went a little bit too deep for my liking, but quick sand off, took over those massive scorch marks. Turned out quite nicely. And it wouldn't be one of my projects if I didn't finish it in Osmo Poly X Oil. This stuff is amazing. It's a little bit on the pricey side, but oh, it brings out the grain and the colour of that wood pops so nicely with it. I wouldn't use anything else. And there you go. That's what I made. So I've got to say, this is probably one of the most expensive giant Jenga blocks you're ever going to make. We've got Praduke, we've got a Roco, we've got some oak, um, some nice birch ply, and well, yeah, well, it's, a, it's a beast. It's got some serious weight to it. I really hope no one's near this when it falls off of the Jenga stack, but I think it's brilliant. I am well impressed that I managed to get that lovely pattern into it um, and make sure that it was all nice and square, nice and even even if it is slightly undersized, um, so I didn't quite make it to the requirements. Um, it's not thick enough, it's not long enough, it's not wide enough. But it's close enough for my liking, hopefully ain't no one gonna worry too much. But it's lovely, I'm really impressed with that. So, if you wanna get involved with this, you've still got time, because Makers is in May, if it still goes on. Um, so if you want to make it, have a look at John Made It on Instagram, um, check out his posts and just do it. So many people are doing some different ones in it. Um, just see what you come up with, bring a buck along and have a play. It's a really good opportunity to meet people. Uh, and I'm not one of these people that are very good at socialising and all that whatnot, but this is going to give it a really good opportunity for everyone to sort of mingle and really interact. So again, John Made It on Instagram, make one, see what you come up with and that's all you can do. And uh, I'll see you on the Jenga playing floor. And don't forget guys, like, subscribe and hit that bell icon. Have a look at some of the older videos I've got on there. Hit the subscribe orb. And if you want to, support me on Patreon. Everything's in the description. Have a good one.